वेलकम टू बुनियाद पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर मोनिका नागपाल वी डिड नॉट इनहेरिट दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक दिस देन हाउ कैन वी गिव दिस टू आर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इन दिस फॉर्म वी नीड टू रिफ्लेक्ट माइंडफुली ऑन आर कोर वैल्यूज एंड मेक कॉन्शियस एफर्ट्स टूवर्ड्स प्रोटेक्टिंग द प्लानिट एंड ऑल्सो अचीव ऑल सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स with bunyad i monica nagpal will bring to fore sustainability champions who are striving to bring back harmony with the nature and also dignity of each life so welcome friends let us welcome our today's guest and uh, we will welcome lucy kumari thank you so much ma'am <laughs> lucy kumari is a urban developer urban planner all in one and she is a different sdg talking about different sdg today let us ask lucy kumari more about herself thank you so much ma'am for first of all inviting me for on this platform thank you and uh, so let me introduce myself my name is lucy kumari and i am an urban planner by profession and i have close to 7 uh, or 8 years of experience working in uh, with mncs and uh, government of telangana so currently i am serving as senior knowledge manager with uh, think tank organization that is national institute of urban management associated with government of telangana so this is all about me and currently i am leading significant projects in hyderabad varangal and telangana so and apart from my uh, professional background i am also a certified yoga instructor and i like to practice yoga meditation and i am a certified graphologist also so i love to see handwriting and uh, apart from that i love to talk about positivity mindset everything so yeah this is a brief introduction about me wonderful that is multifaceted personality <laughs> of lucy kumari Today we are be uh, will be talking about SDG 11, which is about urban planning. So I would like to before we go on to ask her how her uh, sustainability journey started. I would like to just share some data around this. So uh, we are talking about urban planning, and we are going to share what is actually happening. So 1.1 billion urban residents are living in slums. 2 billion more are expected to be there added in next 30 years globally only 1 in 2 urban residents have convenient access to public transport air pollution is no longer exclusively urban problem towns experience poorer air quality than cities in eastern and southeastern asia globally 3 in 4 cities have less than 20% of their areas dedicated to public spaces and streets much lower than the target of 45 to 60 percent and in the developing world 1 billion people lack access to all weather roads so this is what is required to address all these problems no so that is where she is going to help us to understand that what is ob- all about urban planning first how did your journey in sustainability start yeah so i would like to emphasize here so my journey in sustainability vis-a-vis urban planning so how did it start mm-hmm. i was actually preparing for uh, nift that is national institute of fashion technology and architecture also so simultaneously i was preparing for these two courses but uh, incidentally i landed in college with planning background so i got the b plan in my first round and i got spa bhopal and uh, there i stu- i studied for some time and then i got sliding also but after looking at the planning background like after learning a, a month in planning so i realized the architects and uh, like i actually got into architecture college so architects looks into a single building yes whereas if you will see the planners so planners looks into the entire city absolutely and you know it's a very big scale yeah to carry forward with and i was really amazed mesmerized with the work that planners were doing that time hmm. and uh, so with that intention i thought let's go ahead with this uh, planning profession itself and i was really uh, like very 
interested in knowing all these things and let me tell you very frankly that planning is not at all an easy task ma'am yes yes we can understand that that is why i was told telling in the introduction itself that urban planning is different it is sustainable urban planning is even worse you have to plan so much there and this is not only sustainability is not only climate change that yeah. is what we have to understand so, here so you know during our course like during our course curriculum also how many subjects we have studied you will be really like uh, amazed to know so more than 48 subjects we have studied and that were completely different so let me show you i'll just uh, mm-hmm. quickly tell you how many subjects we have studied and just i'll give you the brief introduction like what kind of subjects demography where we study about yes. the population yes planning like how the planning has evolved how the city planning has evolved from uh, chandigarh is a sectoral planning yes. sector sectoral based on sector plan and right. then gandhinagar hmm. jaipur these are planned cities hmm. so how the planning has evolved and then settlements built environment so how these are connected hmm. population and then planning theory so there are uh, various theories of planning uh, back then hmm. so it started from garden city where uh, there were more emphasis emphasis on the gardens hmm. okay and then multi nuclei theory like uh, you will see in hyderabad there are multiple nuclei i would say how many like abits is one hmm. high tech city is another one hmm. and then you will go to the old city is another one yes. so like that multiple nuclei are there and around that the city is revolving right okay and then one nuclei where only uh, one core area is there and the entire city is based on that only yeah that's a core and the city is revolving around there so those kind of theories we studied during that time mm-hmm. and apart from that we have studied various softwares also which is used nowadays also and then the statistics to analyze all the data because you know in planning uh, we have lots of data to analyze hmm. okay so statistics comes into picture economics yeah. since you are talking about the city you just can't talk only about the space thing yes. like the area thing you have to talk about the economy as yes, well yes. like how the economy of the city is growing right so economics and then utilities so when you are talking about uh, planning and when you are talking about city the space is one constraint like one space is one area the area is one thing so area and then uh, utilities utilities uh, here what does it mean the water supply network yes the sewage network right. the solid waste management all those kind of power distribution networks yes. so all these things are taken care yes, of absolutely so while studying all the uh, the four years of bachelor's in planning we have been given all the inputs of all these uh, like we have been touched by all these uh, subjects subjects yes so utilities planning transportation planning mm. land use mm. all these things and then ecology also so you yeah. have to understand that like right now you have uh, indicated that uh, the green spaces are getting reduced right so those things also we have understood we have studied that time and housing mm. community planning legislation since we deal with see most of the planning projects are being gone by government hmm. because it's a large scale project yeah. one person cannot deal with right. it right okay so that's how the legislation also comes into the picture hmm. the laws also comes into the picture correct so that's where we need to know the land policy absolutely. like absolutely larr larr is one uh, land uh, acquisition policy hmm. where if you are uh, acquiring anybody's land then you have to put some give some uh, compensation i would say yeah so those kind of things we have studied like real estate hmm. and then uh, informal sector because informal sector is also the part of the those street vendors right. they are also the part yes, of the yes, city of so course. think about the dimension amazing this is so amazing what i'm asking her now is that how after studying it all because okay we all uh, know that a lot of thing goes into planning a new city but to have a sustainable city then Now that everything is balanced so what is actually a sustainable city i will like to share also before she gets into the uh, problems uh, solving the problem so here are six essential elements that make a city's urban planning almost flawless you must be having a pedestrian friendly invest- infrastructure okay so you have to have a walkable city and now we have seen that lot of people are uh, uh, bicycling also so in one of the areas here in narsingi we have a full uh, cycle strip which has been built 
accessible public transport so are people getting that kind of a transport or not that is also very very essential in a sustainable city then green spaces and parks children have to have some space elderly have to have some space to spend their time sustainable buildings no buildings uh, are actually responsible for significant amount of energy consumption so the buildings need to be very very sustainable then mixed use development meaning that the mixture of uh you have the uh, residential part you have the uh, malls and all which is the commercial part and also you have the offices so the mixed development is also very very essential then it has to be smart technology so how are now buildings using the smart technology probably they have the sensors uh, 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 the red lights are also sensor driven so how are you using technology in the building of the city so if you are having all of these then you are actually making your city sustainable so how did you start to have uh, sustainability and how is it impacting now what is your uh, planning uh, sustainable city is impacting the society so let me start with so uh, currently in my organization we are dealing with the uh, master plan for few towns in mm -hmm. telangana so there what we did we have a standard guidelines mm -hmm. where we used to uh, de uh, like where we used to delineate the areas around all the water bodies <coughs> their ftls ftls meaning uh, full tank mm -hmm. line okay or flood plain mm -hmm. so we are delineating those flood plain river uh, flood plain areas for non -conser uh, for conservation areas hmm. like we are demarking demarcating it as conservation areas where development will not be permitted right so uh, uh, currently we have dealt with around 54 master plans so since we are planners we can actually talk about the planning part yes okay so implementation is later on we hmm. do uh, we do the la uh, implementation little later so what we do in at the planning stage all the water bodies around all the water bodies we we are leaving some uh, parcels of land mm -hmm. for conserving the water bodies right. like we call it as buffers right okay so what about bodies buffer is one thing that we are demarcating and apart from that uh, to segregate the difference between residential and industrial areas we are creating the buffer between both of them okay. so that the residential area should not be impacted by the res, uh, industrial areas uh, yes. problems yes. okay yes. so that's how we are demarcating between residential and industrial areas mm -hmm. regarding this um, technology technology nowadays plays a very important role ma'am let me tell you very, yes. very frankly yes so regarding this technology part um, i would say <coughs> gis hmm. so we are using gis for all these mapping services mm -hmm. mapping the utilities services and uh, everything so planning stage pe we do lots of surveys and mm. it was very cumbersome during that point of time when we used to do it manually yes. so nowadays what we are doing ki you can start it now. yeah it is started it is started okay so when we are talking about technology how do you think we can really uh, use technology for uh, some planning and uh, for sustainable urban development see for planning how we are using uh, technology the way of using the technology is first that uh, previously what we used to do we used to do all the surveys manually mm. like uh, in order to build any uh, map any plan first you need to do the uh, survey mm. primary survey we call it as primary survey right. so you need to have the you need to establish the baseline for that first mm. so uh, we used to go on site going on site is still required mm. because we cannot like uh, skip this step right. we we go to the site but what we have changed it currently previously we used to go on site and we used to take a paper and pen and we used to mark all the buildings all the things over there and then we used to come on uh, come to the office back and then uh, we are digitizing everything and we are entering the data manually yes nowadays what we are doing we are using the apps yes so in our currently uh, whatever plans we have prepared there also we have used the field maps yeah so those are applications where we are uh, putting all the base plans hmm. and then we are going on site and there itself we are uh, marking all those 
whatever details we need suppose we need the land use hmm. so basically we work on the on the existing plans hmm. like if we have to prepare the base map so we'll go on the site hmm. and uh, we will mark all those buildings hmm. and what are their land uses suppose i'll take this building as an example okay hmm. so i came here with my app mm -hmm. and i'll mark it as mixed use hmm. probably uh, if somebody is staying on the fourth floor so it will be marked as mixed use because the ground floor and the first floor is occupied as commercial, commercial yes. and the second or third floor is occupied as residential right so it immediately will come into my application and through application it will come to my system yes. so i need not to do the double work yes you know yes, yes. so that's how we are reducing the manpower work right. and now we are em emphasizing more uh more time on the strategizing and uh, pra implementing here implementation yeah, right yeah absolutely so, so uh, i'm just asking lucy that yeah this is the planning uh, and it is a very very intricate process as we are just seeing uh, that she is so involved with all of that she is so passionately saying so that shows that how sincere she is into planning everything but now when we as citizens move out of our house and see there is no park and we start to criticize the government that okay we don't have a park here or uh, probably there is an elderly couple who has made a house very far and there is no medical institute uh, facility around there or probably there is no hospital around there so how do you really understand this and how do you think that because a sustainable city will be where everything is provided to every citizen right there is no discrimination between uh, any disabled or uh, any um, like elderly or children or any other uh, people around so how do you think that you are helping or what can a layman do in planning uh, ways like what is that person can do in planning yeah i'll help with that so first of all during our planning time also so, so whenever we are planning the master plan for any city we take care of each and everything that uh, every household or every residential is getting that kind of benefits of having a park nearby hmm. having a school in within 1 km hmm. or 2 km so that they hmm. should not go outside and that's where these sdg goals also comes into the picture how because uh, what happens the nowadays the city is a sprawling more rapidly than the population absolutely we, th we think population is increasing yes population is increasing but at the same time what is happening the city is is getting a sprawl more yes and that's how the people are shifting from the city core to the outer areas yes. because they are getting their land over there hmm. easily yes. but there is limitation on the infrastructure yes facilities are less yeah so city administrations are really finding it difficult to provide the infrastructure up to that level hmm. because of the certain constraints it, it might be the economic constraints hmm. it might be the capacity constraints hmm. okay so that's how but at planning level when we do the planning at uh, our level hmm. so at master plan we make sure that all the parks are provided within hmm. 1 km and hmm. you will see whenever a city is planned no so the parks will be provided in a uh, layout mm -hmm. and then the all the schools all the provisions are there mm -hmm. but coming to the implementation part what happens so those parks if they are not getting used they are abandoned yes okay. yes yes so how can we fix it yes so if the local parks are getting fixed mm -hmm. and uh, if all the rooftops are getting used for gardens yeah. that's how we create we can create the uh, sustainable we can fulfill the sustainable development yes, goal yes some greenery can yes, be yes. there around so greenery there. is very important yes uh, for urban areas yeah. because nowadays the urban heat island is also getting created because yes. of this concretization correct so everywhere you will see buildings 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 and only buildings the yes. roads are concretized the right. buildings are concretized absolutely absolutely so parks plays a very important role in the city correct and also uh, the real estate as we can say that uh, the building the builders who are building actually to use water harvesting uh, tools there and to probably have that uh, latitudinal gardens in on the building to use solar panels so these things i i can share share that in, we can uh, as in, a person who is not even planning they can do that and people who are building their own houses also if they can start to develop all of these small small in, uh, things in their houses that will help to have a sustainable city 
एब्सोल्युटली इन फैक्ट मैम तेलंगाना हैज स्टार्टेड हरिता हारम यू नो अर्बन ये forestry mm-hmm. in part few parts of the hyderabad mm-hmm. they have started uh, this forestry like we call it as urban forestry okay so you will see many pockets of the hyderabad is filled with forest okay uh, uh, trees and they have started a new scheme called as harita haram also mm-hmm. so during this uh, harita haram uh, the all the ulps are uh, forced to plant more saplings and more trees in particular areas mm-hmm. so that's how they are trying to increase the number of uh, trees and lung spaces for the area wonderful yeah. that is really wonderful on part of the government but as a person who is going to get all the benefit what can we do is what i'm saying so i can also suggest here that when you are gifting gift a plant <laughs> that is the easiest thing so that somebody who even does not have a plant in the balcony will have some inclination to have that greenery in their house so that was really wonderful so yeah, yeah. i would suggest that uh, at individual level what we can do we can plant more trees at our house hmm. itself like in my house also i have more than 20 30 plants wow. so that's how i maintain it i yes. maintain the aura of my house yes. and that's how whenever you are going outside don't use polythenes and all hmm. so uh, take your own bags yes. as we suggest always yes and so that you should not always uh, looking for uh, the polythene bags and all these small small things we can also yes. use as lay citizens yes layman yes. and uh, in terms of transportation i would suggest avoid using your own transport hmm. carpooling and all carpooling you can do and public uh, transport public transport like hyderabad has also metro this pub, uh, metro yeah. so metro is really blessing for all of us and with time it will be a blessing because right now it is trying to uh, expand yes so uh, wherever it is getting connected maybe in 4 5 years or next 10 years it will be expanded to all the parts of the city yes and then more use of public transportation will be the key absolutely this is very very important that we have to leave no carbon footing so as less we can use our own vehicles uh because if there are more cars on the road then the people actually every yeah. one car will have only one person sitting in the car so instead of that car pooling is a good option uh, if you are going to the same office and you live in the same gated community uh let us divide our cars probably one day or one week one person can take everybody and then so there are small small things and you also have some suggestions please put down in the comments below so that everybody will know that yes we are also involved and this sustainable development goals is not for the un but it is for all of us to follow so this was really wonderful of lucy to come all the way here and share her thoughts one last message lucy for all the audience today use more greenery and use the environment friendly uh, initiatives everywhere every step wherever you can yes thank you so much lucy it was really wonderful to have you and we are really uh, giving you all the best for your future also thank, thank you, you so, so much. much namaste thank